can categorize amyloid diseases in basically a variety of types. Uh, but if we look, uh, if, but if we look at the spread of amyloid diseases, uh, it can be classified into two categories. If it could be systemic, means it has spread all over the body, or it could be localized, which means that it is contained only in one organ. However, the most common type is usually systemic infection, which means the rate, the general ratio of systemic infections to localized infections is magnitude to one. So, uh, there are generally four types of amyloid diseases that are commonly seen in people. The primary one is called the AL amyloidosis. The L refers to the light chain, and we are going to uh, see what does it mean. Then there is the secondary amyloidosis, which is mostly called during inflammatory, <coughs> chronic inflammatory infections. It means chronic infections are those infections that are long term. Then the third one and the fourth one are quite similar. However, the third one is hereditary, which means it is transferred from parent to offspring. And it is normally called ATDR. TDR is basically a protein transthyretic. And I would like to stop you over here. Yep. Was saying that there is no reason for why this misfolding occurs. You are presenting over here the reasons why this these misfolding occurs. Now, these are not the reasons. These, these are sort of, if I give you the hereditary amyloid process, then it means that uh, the genetic sequence of that protein, the amino acid sequence, it has some flaw, and because of those flaws, the protein is not folding properly. These light chains deposit and create insoluble structures for amyloid amyloids. See? These are the light chains. Now these amyloids create filament type structures which are called peripherals. We have studied in types of protein that fibrous proteins are a type of structural protein. These fibrils resist protease. Now whenever whenever a wrong functioning occurs in the body, your body detects it immediately and sends cells to counter it. So we have studied that there are enzymes called proteases that denature proteins. These amyloids resist cleavage by proteases. So they become insoluble and in, in primary amyloid doses, if we are talking about systemic infections, uh, these can go any part of the body. And if we are talking about multiple organs or localized infection, they can deposit majorly in kidneys or heart and they keep on occupying the cellular surface until they, they block the organ and are a cause of organ failure. Okay. In secondary amyloid doses, which is mostly seen in third world countries or developing countries, this is due to chronic inflammation. Chronic inflammation is long term inflammation. Inflammation we have already studied. It is what what does inflammation mean? Soreness. Soreness. And why does inflammation occur? Due any to, of any due to any entry of a pathogen, right? But if your body is in a continuous state of inflammation, that is called chronic inflammation, and it can eventually cause death. During this period, whenever an amyloid dosis occurs, that is categorized as a secondary amyloid dosis. In hereditary amyloid doses, what happens is there is uh, a protein called transthyretin. Now, we have studied vitamins, right? Transthyretin is the protein that is responsible for taking vitamin A and thyroxin. Thyroxin is a thyroid hormone. Right? <coughs> so, when this protein is called transthyretin, it does not carry vitamin A as efficiently as it's supposed to. See the structure? This is composed of two and as uh, we told, mostly amyloids consist of beta seeds mm -hmm. instead of alpha beta seeds. 
in the microscopic image, you can't see it right now, but there are times. Not amyloid, uh, the protein. The proteins are mostly alpha helices and amyloids are mostly beta helices. They have alpha helices, but the quality of beta, beta sheets are increased in them. Okay, so if we see multiple systems, multiple organ carriers, we usually see these common groups. We have the heart and kidney, the amyloids accumulate in heart and kidney simultaneously, or they would accumulate in heart and gastric tract or they would accumulate in the kidney or the PNS. PNS is what? Peripheral nervous system. It, is, it basically controls your motor activity of the limbs and right? the movement of them. So during the a secondary amyloidosis or double A amyloidosis, the most affected organ is the kidney. While in primary amyloidosis, the most infected organ is your uh, backbone, which produces plasma cells and antibodies. Uh, in the uh, fourth type of amyloidosis, the protein uh, transthyretin is functional. However, the folded form of that protein is non-functional. That does not work. Right? So now my question is, uh, that how long does it take for amyloidosis to become to become secondary amyloidosis? Or how long for primary amyloidosis process to become secondary? So uh, now this type of disease is very rare. Because it is occurring under so many different circumstances, it is very difficult for it to diagnose. So the diagnostic criteria normally appears that we have proteinuria, which means you get protein in your tree. And then there is organ enlargement. Usually the tongue is seen, which has ridges like this. Normally the tongue is like this, but in amyloid doses the tongue is enlarged and like this. Then we have studied Congo red dye in microbiology. Right? So, congruent dye binds to these fibrils. We can use that, that to diagnose that as well. And in cases where the amyloids cluster around the heart, you can check for an or hormone called the BNP. The BNP hormone is released when the heart is stressed. So, an elevated level of BNP hormone or an elevated level of light chain in the blood uh, can be a sign that amyloidosis might be happening in the body. And then there are multiple problems in the peripheral nervous system which cannot be explained. Which target will try to explain, but during ambiguous problems that occur randomly in the peripheral nervous system, for example, the numbness of limbs, that could be also a cause because what happens is, here is a neuron. And these conduct electrical activity in this direction. So what happens is, if an amyloid binds here, it is going to create a plague. A plague is just like that you see on teeth or your skin with this common cap, right? So if if they accumulate on the neuron, they stop neurons' electrical conductivity which causes numbness. And as Walid, Walid told, there is a tingling sensation in the finger. That syndrome is called a carpal tunnel syndrome, which is called, caused by a radial nerve. It's called radial nerve in a way to four fingers and not the last one. Right? So, the risk factors are usually included with age, people middle-aged to 60 and above are most um, are susceptible. susceptible to this disease. Um, uh, when it comes to the gender, males are uh, have multiple diseases of multiple organs or multiple infections. So you can have a liver disease or you can have diabetes or you can have uh, a reducing eyesight or bone diseases. 
a type of amyloidosis could be called autoimmune disease, but by all diseases are not autoimmune. Okay. Uh, thank you. It was a very long, long, long presentation.